Peace. Waiting on my Instagram to catch up. All right, got Facebook. All right, we live, baby. Peace, love, and light. It's your girl, Morgan Renee Myers, tuning in with you all for another reading of Feeding the Soul, because that's my business by Tabitha Brown. We are on chapters 25 and 26, because I'm doing them two at a time. And let's hop right into it. Uh, the title of chapter 25 is Listen for the Wisdom. It starts off with a African proverb quote that reads, Remember the wisdom of your ancestors in order to become wise. Let's go. If you are from anywhere near Eden, North Carolina, including Reedsville or Draper, you probably had your hair pressed or an outfit made by my great-great-aunt Beck. She passed away at 93 when I was in 11th grade, but she was such a huge part of my upbringing. She helped raise me, and I learned so much from her. Aunt Bet was deaf and mute. Had been my entire life. Apparently, she'd gotten some kind of ear infection as a little girl, and because she was black, the doctors who could have helped her would not see her as a patient. She lost her hearing as a result. So the only words she could say as an adult were the words she knew at two. Mama, Papa, eat. Mostly, she had a sweet groan she'd do that communicated everything she wanted you to know. She couldn't hear, but she could feel everything. Her other senses seemed to be off the charts. So y'all know Tab has a huge imagination, right? I always had it, even as a child. My Aunt Bet taught me everything there is to know about doing hair. She also taught me how to sew and crochet. Okay, Tab, let me find out uh, Tab know how to crochet. She ain't tell me that when I made her the crochet earrings and she uh, tabbed me on the line. She ain't tell me she crocheted. Okay, back to the reading. She also taught me how to sew and crochet, even gave me a dance lesson or three. So at one point, I got it in my mind that Aunt Bet could actually hear. I thought, Aunt Bet messing with us. I know she can hear. I'm not going to lie to you. I still wonder about it to this day. Aunt Bet's beauty shop was in what we call the old house. It was the first house my granddaddy had built on his property. He let my Aunt Bet, who was actually his aunt, stay there. That's where she did people's hair and made clothes. That's also where I spent most of my time when I was little. If I was visiting my granny, I'd just walk over to the old house and Aunt Bet would be sewing or watching her stories, soap operas, on a black and white TV. She watched everything on that little TV. She knows what's going on with those stories. I know she can hear. I know she can. I would try to test Aunt Bet all the time to try to trick her into revealing this secret I thought she had. When I was eight, I stood at the screen door with my back turned so she couldn't see me or read my lips. I said, Aunt Bet, I know you can hear. I promise I won't tell nobody. It will be just my and your secret. But she kept on sewing. I still believe she could hear, though. I felt like she'd do little things to let me know she could. Whenever something would happen on one of her programs, she'd make her little noise. Ah, mmm. And there was one day that just sealed my suspicions for me. I was the youngest out of all my cousins on that side of the family. My sister, Tasha, was the oldest. In between were my cousins Keisha and Shalina. Now, you know when the cousins get got together, especially when a little one like me got to hang with the older ones, we were bound to get into some mess. That day, my sister and cousins were cussing and cutting up. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to cuss too. Honey, I wanted to see how it would feel coming out of my mouth. So I was just out there trying to be grown, acting like the older kids, just cussing up a storm. Later, when Mama came to pick us up, I bet came out on the porch and groaned. Um, she pointed at me, then put her finger to her mouth and shook her head, saying, Mmm, now don't you ask me, because I don't know how my mama knew what I bet meant, but she did. Oh, you been out here saying bad words, huh? Mama, I didn't. I bet interrupted him up. Mm -mm. And of course, you know who got in trouble. From that day on, I knew in my heart that Aunt Bet could hear. How else could she know I was out there saying bad words on the porch? That made me more determined than ever to get Aunt Bet to talk to me. I was going to keep her secret. During the week, she'd go to a place folks called The Site. It was like a community center for the elderly. They'd send a van around and take people to the site to play bingo or do arts and crafts. It was Aunt Bet's way of getting out and having fun. But I liked to think she had the most fun with us on the weekends when she would spend the night with us if my mom and dad went out somewhere. In 1989, Marcia Griffiths released a mix, a remix of Electric Boogie, a.k.a. The Electric Slide, and Aunt Bet came to spend the night with us. Honey, when we turned the song on, she came in that kitchen and cut a whole rug. She started catching that beat and doing her neck roll. She was the best dancer I'd ever seen. 
And once again, I was determined. Aunt Bet, you can tell me. You can hear, can't you? I promised I'm not going to tell nobody. She just looked at me and smiled. I tried again another day. Okay, Aunt Bet, I'm tired of asking you. I ain't going to ask you no more. I love you anyway, even if you don't trust me. I won't tell nobody. I told y'all I was determined. This went on for years. On that day, Aunt Bet looked at me and smiled. Then she went. Honey, that was all the evidence I needed. In my spirit, I convinced myself that was her saying, I can't tell you, but there you go. But here's the truth in this whole story. I didn't need to know. It wasn't my place to be in her business. In her, capa in her capacity, the wisdom that she imparted to me my whole childhood wasn't diminished a single bit by her deafness, no matter to what degree it actually existed in my imagination. I spent so much time trying to figure out if she was hiding a secret that I'm sure I missed out on some amazing opportunities in her presence as a kid. I now realize that sometimes we are just longing for an inside connection. I wanted something special between Aunt Bet and me, a secret for us to share. But we can't force that kind of thing. Our job is just to love people simply where they are, to accept whatever parts of themselves they give us access to. But the larger lesson is this. Listen to the wisdom around, no matter what form it takes. I often think back now to all the great things my Aunt Bet taught me. For a long time, I did hair and made extra money off the strength of the gifts she shared with me. When she taught me to crochet, I watched her create all kind of things, some I didn't understand, like the Kleenex box covers with hats to match. And although I haven't done it in years, I'm pretty sure if I started back crocheting, I could pick it right on up. She taught me, I teach a tab. When we meet, I teach a girl. Um, she taught me not to be a follower. I knew when she was challenging me to be a leader, to be better than I was acting, and she didn't have to say a word. She didn't know American Sign Language, but when I wanted to go run off with the older kids, she knew how to point at me and communicate that I was staying there with her. All that love, creativity, and wisdom are what I hold in my heart. Maybe some people might have judged Aunt, my Aunt Bet based on their perceptions of her abilities as a person who was deaf and mute. We do that to each other too much, you know? Judging folks, putting limitations on them. But those same people missed out on so much. My Aunt Bet lived a life, a full life, and left a legacy of wisdom that I will forever carry with me. Shout out to Aunt Bet. All right, moving on to chapter 26, entitled, Get It Clean. Starts off with a quote by An Angelique Kidjo. You can fall, but you can rise also. In our house, and probably in many households in the South, the rule was that Saturday was cleanup day. The morning was set aside for cleaning the whole house. In our home, everyone had different responsibilities. My job was dusting, and it included dusting my mama's bell collection. She had 237 bells. I know that, honey, because I had to count them every doggone week. One particular Sunday, I didn't pick up the bells. I used a little duster to just wipe around them. Usually, I dust and wipe the inside of the bell as well as the shelf where it sat. But on this sunny North Carolina weekend, I wanted to go outside and play. By just doing a quick dust on the outside of the bell, I got finished quicker. Then, I went to my room and rushed through cleaning it. I pushed stuff under my bed and shoved everything else in my closet, closing my door. From just the naked eye, at first glance, my room looked clean. The bells looked dusted. The tables looked clean. I was good, right? I thought so. Honey, I threw on my play clothes and outside I went. I was out there just having me a good old time. We had a carport with a deck connected to it, and my daddy had a way of stepping out there and yelling my name. The wind seemed to carry my daddy's voice so clearly. When my daddy called my name, everybody within earshot said, Ooh, if things were fine and he just needed me for something, he'd say, Tabitha. But baby, if he said my middle name too, I knew something was wrong. That day, I heard my daddy yell, Tabitha Bonita. I was in the circular street with my neighbor on a little skateboard going up and down a little hill near the house. As soon as I heard my daddy, I said, uh-oh. That walk home was so doggone long. Well, not that walk, that run. It might have felt like I was walking because I was so nervous. But honey, I ran home. Yes, sir, daddy. My mom and dad were standing in our living room. Mama said, what's your job in here? What's your responsibility? I said to clean and dust the bells, to dust the tables and stuff. Well, pick that bell up right there. She pointed to the silver-painted cowbell, one of my favorites. When I picked it up, you could see the circle of dust on the table. A perfect ring. <laughs> they both looked at me and said some version of, what is this? I said, dust. 
Then mama said, pick up another bell. Pick up another one. I picked up three or four bells. And all you could see were these circles and the dust on the table. I thought you dusted. I did. Mama said, no, you took a shortcut. You didn't want to do the full job. You dusted around the bells and you dusted on top of them. But you, but you see how we knew what you did? All we did was pick it up to see the evidence that you didn't do it right. All I can manage was, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. Then my dad said, come up here to this room. I walked up the steps behind him to my bedroom. He lifted up my little twin bed, and under it was all my little toys, some shoes and clothes, everything I had stuffed under there. Daddy said, now, why did you do that? Because I wanted to go outside and play. So you were in such a rush that you just stuffed all that under there and didn't do what you were told? You tried to trick us and make you think you had cleaned your room, but all you did was straighten up? That's when they both sat me down and had a conversation. There's a difference between straightening up and cleaning up. When you clean up, you clean under that bed. You pick up those bells and you dust them. That way, when we come back around and check your work, there's nothing to be found because you did what you were supposed to do. My mom used to tell me, look, when you have company coming over to the house, you can't just straighten up the house. You got to clean up. I, I'm sure I gave her the classic nine-year-old blank stare. Nevertheless, she continued, because if you just straighten up, that means if somebody sits on the couch, they might be able to look under the chair and see all the dust and socks and different things you missed. Do you want somebody to sit on your bed and find a nasty pair of drawers up under that chair, up under your chair? You don't want to be embarrassed about that. She then would give me a tutorial on what it meant to clean the house as opposed to just straightening up. Lift up the chairs, lift up the couches, lift up your bed, clean everything from under all those places, put everything away, wash, fold, and put away your clothes, vacuum the carpets, mop the floors, pick up each bell. Mama taught me that you should never have to worry about being embarrassed about what guests may find when they come over if you truly clean up. At such a young age, I honestly thought their lessons were just about cleaning up the house. But as I became an adult, I realized that this same principle could be applied to the way we approach our lives. If you simply just straighten up your life, you will leave room for people to pull back the covers and see everything you didn't actually fix. You still leave room for people to see your wrongs, flaws, and dirt. But if you clean up your life, they can search and search and search, and they won't find anything but you. Some of us have just been straightening up our lives. We haven't decided to clean it up yet. There's a huge difference, honey. If you just do the bare minimum so you look good on the surface, folks who come into your life may find out or see some things you didn't want them to see. Your life might look good on the outside, but if somebody looks really closely, they will likely see what you've been hiding. We've seen the straightened up folks. We've been the straightened up folks. It's like being in a rush to go somewhere and not having time to take a bath. You change your clothes, put on some perfume or cologne. You may look good, may even smell all right from a distance. But honey, God forbid somebody gets too close. Then they see the ring around the top of your shirt or they find out them drawers are dirty. Woo! If you clean up your life, baby, they or you can look all they want to, but they won't find a thing. And honestly, it isn't even about what other people uncover in your dirty house. Honey, you will feel better when your life is clean. Now listen, I'm not pointing any fingers. We all must check ourselves. There's an old song I used to hear growing up. The Canton Spirituals used to sing, I've got to clean up. I've, oh, i got to clean up. Hey, what I messed up. We all have to do that sometimes, right? Let's commit to asking ourselves on a regular basis. Am I straightening up or cleaning up? Which way do you want to live? I prefer to live a clean life with no hidden dirt. It makes the blessings come easier. And honey, don't just straighten up your life and then invite somebody into it thinking they ain't don't going to catch nothing. People will notice. You will notice. Take your time and really clean it up. Be ready for anybody or anything to come into your life because you know it's clean. You ain't got nothing to hide. And even if they bring up something from your past, if you've cleaned up, it won't matter. You'll be ready to have a conversation about it because you know it's not still hiding underneath the perfect picture you think you painted. Yes, cleaning up our lives means we have to face all that dirty stuff, all those things that have piled up in our hearts and minds that can be uncomfortable for sure. When my daddy lifted my mattress and saw everything I took down there, I felt exposed, uncomfortable. It's such a terrible feeling to have a trouble pending because you didn't take care of your dirt. But my parents blessed me with the best lesson I've ever learned in my life. If you are really ready to take on life, to take on anything or anybody that comes your way, clean that thing up. No matter what it is, you know where the dirt is. It could be major or minor. Whatever it is, it's yours and that's your business. But don't just straighten it up. Make sure you clean it up.
Good word, Tab. All right, that's the end of chapter 25 and 26. I hope y'all enjoyed that. Um, if you're following on YouTube and Instagram, I mean, excuse me, Facebook and Instagram and want to catch this replay, follow my YouTube, Morgan Myers, M-O-R-G-A-N-M-Y-E-R-S. You'll see a red logo with a yellow M inside. That's me. Y'all subscribe. And thank y'all so much for tuning in. Peace.